Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, brought to you by championnews.net, your choice for the conservative voice. This is Carol Parisi. Today, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself are speaking with Lenny Jarrett, and we are talking about schools and school boards, school board elections, and why you need to run for school board, or if you know someone, encourage them to run for school board. Um, clearly, Illinois is in a crisis. We have the pension crisis. This pension crisis, this unsustainable debt is created by the pensions, mostly the public sector union teacher pensions, correct? Correct. Now, this is taxpayer funded. So anybody that's a property tax owner better be listening very clearly because these are solutions to a what detail. the problems are. A detail. Over 60% of your real estate tax bill is for education. Yes. Of that amount, over 80% goes uh, for salary. Pension, and, yeah, the salaries, pension, and benefits. And there is a big overhung thing that you don't see because it's at the state level that's put us in debt some $160 billion just in the pension thing. So there's an awful lot of money flowing into the K-12 education system that is right. dominated by what? Not the parents, <laughs> no. not the school board. It's the IEA well, and the AFT, the teachers' union. I don't like to call them the teachers' union because it ain't the teachers' fault. <laughs> it's a stinking union that has really masterminded this immense waste of money and the political corruption that comes directly out of the money that's supposed to have gone to educating your kids. Well, you know what, though? As a mom sending my child to the public school, I want my child to have a world-class education. Right. And I think that a lot of folks... Then, then don't of, send them to a public school. Well, <laughs> but, but wait a second. I believe that when people go look for houses, they look for high blue ribbon school districts. I think a lot of the taxpayers and the folks are being bamboozled by a perception that we have these great schools and you're willing to pay for excellence. Even the great schools for the North Shore, great is defined as spending a lot of money. Uh, but that money is those, not going to the kids, and I think the taxpayers and folks need to be aware of that. I don't think the Crank in another statistic. Uh, well, what makes uh, for children that do well in school? Uh, you might say class size. Baloney. 15 to 40 doesn't make much of any difference. 40 does almost as well as 15 kids in a classroom. Ah, Teachers pay. We're going to pay them a lot more. We'll get teachers. That is unrelated to, to the achievement of the, of the kids. You know what's really... Teachers are not paid on performance base. That's the no, problem. Of course not. But you, not. you know what does correlate a lot? Hmm. It's uh, where they put their feet. Under uh, What kind of a family do they have? Socioeconomic status is the biggest is correlator the biggest to yes, achievement. Why? Because those kids, they're sitting in a home where the parents have got an education, they're successful in business, they have a nice income, and things are said there that might indicate that you, you could get going and, and answer you know, things uh, in arithmetic and so forth. You get energized a little bit uh, with your feet under the kitchen table. And that has a bigger relationship than all these other things it's, that the union says they want to pour right, money it's in. It's one of the biggest predictors, but you have schools in, even in the, in the south side of Chicago that even the really poor neighborhoods do well because the parents get involved. Whether they know the answers or not, their involvement alone by uh, being able to get to a school that they want their kid to go to, there are schools in Chicago that do absolutely wonderful, but name they're not inside the public school. Name system. one that isn't related uh, well, to not having, in the, to not having the children that from the politicians that are <laughs> yeah. the main ones that the schools were built for. Yeah, the, the Jose Reyes be, is actually one of the south side of could Chicago. Be, or it could be. St. Elizabeth's, 4100 yes. South Wabash. Yep. It's a little Catholic school. Private it's, school. For it's 80 pri yes. years, it's They're been... Private, both private schools. It, it, right. But for 80 years, it's, had, it's been all black and doing the thing there. It's only about 30% Catholic. And the cost on it today is about $4,500 per child. Student. Not the 16000 yeah. and more. And the yeah. teachers are paid about one half what they are in the in the Chicago school system. All of the ratios are crazy, but those right. kids right. become the leaders. They don't throw them out of school. They work patiently with yep. them. The 
the mothers pay typically about two thousand dollars in tuition to get them into that yeah, private yeah. school. So basically, money is not the answer. Money is money and money. A lot money of and the more black money. people. Michael, I know you want to say something. Well, backing up uh, what what Jack was saying. Uh, and St. Elizabeth's has something very unique about it because here you have, you know, parents that are, are struggling financially, mm -hmm. yet because their kids' education is important, they find the money somewhere right. to try yeah. to get in. Can now, I also, the teachers are making a fraction of what they make in the public right. sector. So we've yeah. got teachers and we've got parents that care about the kids, and that service. makes for it's success. about the kid. Yeah. But, Michael, I have a question for yeah. you. Those, those children in St. Elizabeth's, and I don't know if anybody knows this, how many of those kids are from a single-parent family? A lot of them. A lot uh, of them. A, a lot so of them are. So that's actually a yeah. great role model. It is. Because, let's face it. The, the, that makes up for the fact that... Uh, the, uh, you know, the, the the black community used to have fathers in it, yeah, but uh, when they Johnson put up the buildings and, the war on poverty. and they they <laughs> uh, well gave them worked. they gave them money if there wasn't a man in the house, so they subtracted the man from the house. But a lot of those black mothers uh, uh, handled football players. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, now if, them. if you want, there's, there's a big difference between uh, 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 poverty and and being. Uh, Oh, uh, de there's a difference between being in poverty and destitute. Yeah. And uh, due to a lot of reasons, and because much of these families, they are on a cash economy. They have more money than what the statistics would say. And a mother with a lot of guts will come up with that $2,000 and dominate her kid and put him in a school like St. Elizabeth's, and he'll get, he and she will get a really good education yep. in there. Yep. Now, Michael, if you wanna, you yeah, if if, uh, if you wanna find really quality education, you have to go to some place like Finland. Now, speaking to what Jack was saying, uh, and I've gotten in arguments with this because you know my wife's Finnish and with lots of Finnish She's relatives. Finnish with what? But in Finland, you've got ethnocentric values where they all work together for the common good. The family structure is intact and it is sound, and they all contribute, and the result is. Incredible education. Finland, I believe, is at the very top in the world in education. Yeah, the, the Finns, incidentally, uh, in the beginning of World War II, uh, fought the big communist Russia to a standstill. Kick their butt, mm -hmm. not a standstill. <laughs> well, now That's we, a determined bunch. You know what? Now, how does this, all this school stuff, how does that mm. affect Illinois as a whole? Is this impeding Illinois' economic growth? Oh, it is. Uh. Absolutely, because they, the state, the legislature, trying to figure out how to close their budget gaps. A lot of it's due to the pensions right now. A lot of it's due to the the part of the pension problem is the end of career spiking that they do in salary teacher contracts. Well, explain to our listeners what that is specifically. In, in almost every district, there's one this year that's voted against it. The last four years of a teacher's contract in most districts, they get a six percent raise. So it's basically their pay is going up by over twenty five percent the last four years. So it's artificially inflating their pensions because their pensions are. To give it out based on their last four years of work, yeah. so it, it's it's causing the money that the state was going to give to education from the state, the less money is going there because the money's got to go into that the pensions to pay for the pensions. pensions. So it's cutting the state money that's coming back, which is what a lot of people complain about. But the biggest money that goes to the schools is from your local property taxes. That's where all that's where their money is coming from. That's why this legislature is talking about in their lame duck session about shifting the pension burden back onto the property. Odors again. Impossible. We're going to have more and more. Yeah, they're going to try. There is only a feint at the at the problem because at it Madigan, is. who's responsible for this trashy thing we've got, yeah. Mike Madigan, Mike, uh, that son of a gun, he's masterminded <laughs> this whole debt that we're into. He has, and then he's thrown up what he considers a solution that the dopes out there, the taxpayers, are stupid and they won't realize that he doesn't really mean it that he's going to put it back you, to the local. You know what? Because what would happen if they put any portion of that back there? They would bankrupt all of the school districts, and you'd have one hell of a time yeah. at the local level. They so you can't back way. up the, the sins of the legislature no. under Mr. Madigan. They're well, going to try, though, because if they push it back and leave it uncapped, then all it is, the property tax owners are going to be the ones going bankrupt. Well, well that's, you know that's a way of bankrupting all of the local school yes. system. That's what it would be... The, <laughs> They can go bankrupt. The state can't go bankrupt legally. The state is just going to plain go crash. Yeah, the state. It'll yeah, crash. That's where we're heading if we don't do well, something. Well, here's the good news. 
Um, there is an opportunity to run for school board yep. if you're fiscally ah. responsible. Step up. Um, November twenty, uh, December twenty fourth is, is the, the final very day. Fa final day. You need fifty signatures to get on the school board. Yep. Lenny, if folks, if this has piqued the interest in any of our listeners, can they contact you real quick for more information in the next? Would you say seconds? those dates again <laughs> when, when they can actually? Uh, 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 get what they need to get before they can run for the school we board will after the in break. April.